Because enzymes are such an important part of any, every chemical reaction that happens in a cell, um, it's really important to understand the factors that affect enzymes and enzyme activity. This is because by speeding up or slowing down reactions, that's how the cell can control um, the functions of the cell and the processes of metabolism. So uh, understanding these are really important. The cell tries to maintain ideal conditions for enzyme activity, but will also block and control those when necessary to stop reactions happening. So in terms of environmental factors, things that will affect uh, enzyme activity include the temperature and the pH of the solution in which the reaction is happening, and also the presence of inhibitors. Um, these may be uh, drugs or chemicals uh, that are in the cell, but mostly they're actually produced by the cell itself in order to inhibit or stop a reaction going forward in order to provide that level of control. Also, uh, because of the nature of what we call the uh, kinetics of the experiment, the concentrations of the reactants and the concentration of the enzyme are also going to have an effect on how fast that chemical reaction goes. So, proteins uh, function by recognizing and binding to complementary structures. And this is because of their shape. And just to go back up here, um, here's again the enzyme for catalase. It has an active site here, and the substrate binds into that active site. We tend not to draw it this way. We tend to uh, draw things a little bit more schematically, like this substrate fitting into its active site. But also, we might use this ribbon diagram here to show uh, the four different um, polypeptides that make up the catalase enzyme and uh, how that goes together. So this will fold to make a particular shape and that forms the pocket that's the active site and that needs to fit uh, by the induced fit model whatever the substrate is and that might be uh, a chemical like hydrogen peroxide, it might be other proteins, DNA or um, RNA for example. And that shape depends on folding and the folding depends on the environment. So as we look for you might want to look back at protein folding as a video. Um, the, the polypeptide folds based on intramolecular bonds, bonds within that molecule um, that bind together. And those are affected by pH and temperature, for example, which are going to affect enzyme activity. So extreme conditions like very high or low pH or high temperature will interfere with these interactions that help the protein to hold its shape. And if the temperature, for example, goes very high, the uh, protein might unfold permanently. So this diagram shows perhaps some important uh, side chains on this active site that are going to bind to be complementary to this substrate and those need to be lined up and they're on different parts of the polypeptide chain which is being held together by these intramolecular bonds. If we heat this up or provide extreme pH those bonds may, longer, may no longer function and the protein here, the polypeptide is going to unfold. That means that these two side chains and that one are now no longer together and therefore we've destroyed the active site and this is a denatured enzyme. Uh, so this is something we're going to explore in terms of our practical. What conditions are going to um, cause this to uh, not function so well and end up being more like this? The other thing that happens even if the protein is um, in good conditions is that we can block enzyme activity using inhibitors. There's two main types, competitive and non-competitive. So a competitive inhibitor, shown here in blue, uh, can bind to the active site but is not a substrate for the reaction. Uh, because it's occupying that site, it's competing with the substrate and this substrate can't get in there anymore because uh, the competitive inhibitor is blocking it. Obviously the presence of the competitive inhibitor is going to stop that enzyme from functioning and therefore slow down the reaction. Uh, this type of inhibitor might bind somewhere else that's outside the active site, but because it's caused the binding here, the shape of the protein has changed slightly, forming like this, and therefore, uh, again, the substrate won't uh, bind or won't bind as much to that, so this non-competitive inhibitor is inhibiting or slowing down the possibility of um, that enzyme from working. It's just important to note that competitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors might not completely block the enzyme. So if there's some of this, then some of the enzymes will still function and sometimes this substrate can knock out that one and replace it. So a competitive inhibitor doesn't stop the enzyme working completely, it just slows down the reaction rate. Um, what we also can see is that the reaction rate depends on the concentration of the substrates. Um, clearly the 
other aspect of this is the concentration of the enzyme. The more enzyme you have, the faster it's going to work. But this uh, graph shows the concentration of the substrate. So uh, if we look at this uh, situation where there's plenty of enzyme around, three units of that, but not much substrate, the reaction rate is going to be fairly low. But as we increase our substrate concentration, uh, there's more and more of that. Um, these become occupied with substrate and the reaction happens maximally. We get to this point though where the reaction rate's not going up any higher because all three of the enzymes here are working at their maximum. They've all got substrate on them and they're all working as hard as they can. Adding more substrate isn't going to make that reaction go any faster. So what we see with a lot of uh, reactions is that they will increase with substrate concentration before reaching a threshold. A very similar graph will be shown if we kept the level of substrate the same and increased the amount of enzyme. Once you've got more enzyme than can possibly uh, be used on that substrate, there's no point in adding any more enzyme. You've reached the maximum. Um, there are some activities here. These online activities are sort of virtual pracs, virtual labs that you can do in order to explore um, how pH or substrate concentration will affect enzyme activity. Um, and there's a couple of different versions of that. I recommend them both. And then there's some additional resources and videos here.